Oh no, Arturia has released Pigments 5. Now I have to learn everything again. And I'm sure they messed it up because Pigments 4 was already such a good synthesizer. There is no way they... What? It's a good upgrade. Ah, come on. I don't know. What? It's a free upgrade. <laughs> free? Yes, that's right. Pigments itself is not a free synthesizer, but the upgrade from version 4 to version 5 is free. And because it's always quite overwhelming to look at pigments for the first time, I think it's a good idea to make an introduction video for you. So in only a few minutes, you will have a better understanding of how pigments works. Also, after the video, check out this playlist and as always, feel invited to leave a comment in case I forget to mention something really important or just to say hi. But now let's finally have a look at one of the most loved virtual synthesizers of our time. Let's start with the main menu here in the top left corner where you can start a new preset. And also you can resize the window and even the theme, which is a very nice feature here in Pigments. Let's open the sound library here in the middle and go to sound banks. And for example, open the Pigments 5 sound bank to listen to the new sounds. For now, I close the library again and show you the four main surfaces of Pigments. With the main thing, the synth panel already activated, this is the back end where you spend most of the time. But when you open the play panel, you will look at a simplified surface with only the most important parameters. And this is perfect for, let's say, a live performance situation. And it also features this nice visualizer. There's also an effects panel and a sequencer panel, but we will look at them a little later in this video. So let's focus on the synth panel first. There are two main sound engines in Pigments, Engine 1 and Engine 2, as well as the third one, the Artillery engine. And Engine 1 and 2 can do the same thing, for example, play a wavetable sound. And I only want to show you the most important stuff in this video, so you can load a waveform from this big library here. And this is how you can change the position and also add more voices to your sound. But what if you don't want to work with a wavetable? Of course, you have other options. For example, analog, which gives you three oscillators. And you can change the basic waveforms here and mix them together with the volume knob. And you can use oscillators one and two to trigger this modulator section here, but that's a bit too advanced for this video. So let's better check out another option here, the sample option. Yes, you got that right. Pigments can play samples for you. There's again a huge library of pre-made samples, but you can also load your own samples. And the main reason you want to do that is probably because you want to turn pigments into a granular synthesizer. Oh. And with the fourth engine option, Harmonic, you have even one more way to make really unique, outstanding sounds. But again, let's not dive into that in this video. So let's better learn how we can send the sound of the engines through a filter and also what all the colorful buttons are there for. Like I said before, engine 2 can do the same stuff like engine 1. And you can send the sound to filter 1 or filter 2. We have two filters here with this button, kind of fluently. And of course, individually for engine 2 and also engine 1. And before we look at the filter section here, let me show you the artillery engine, which is mainly made for noises and uh, such stuff. And it also features another oscillator here, which is set to minus 12 halftone steps and a sine curve by default. And yeah, I think it's just a very common way to add more weight to your sound by adding an octave deeper tone to it. Now that's up to you. Now let's look at the filter section here. We have two filters in pigments and the mode section is pretty self-explaining, I think. You can change the modes here as well as the multi-mode type, whatever. I think it's okay to continue and focus on these wonderful, colorful buttons here. Well, it looks way more complicated than it actually is. 
Just check out all the tabs here, the keyboards, envelopes, LFO, functions, random, combinate. Let's stay with the random. And if you have set your window size to 100%, the tab here will perfectly line up with the related buttons. So random one, random two, random three, random one, two and three. Or let's say I want to add an LFO to my sound. Let's click on LFO one here and the related tab will open up automatically LFO one, LFO two and three, as well as here two and three. And I connect my LFO one, let's say with a cutoff filter of filter one. It's just dragging and dropping and I can change the value to my liking, just like that. And I remove this connection with a double click. And by the way, the double click is how you can reset all the values and all the parameters. It's not like holding control and double clicking and jumping in circles or something. I just thought I mentioned that. Of course, you also want to learn more about functions and combinate. And for that, I just recommend to open a random sound like this one, for example. It has a function going on so you can see what it does. And also four macros, which are basically like remote control of specific parameters. And I'm quite sure you want to listen to the angel voice right now. Am I right? Here we go. So this is not a sound demo anyway. So let's continue with... The effects panel. Make sure you switch it on with this little button here. And you have two FX channels as well as an auxiliary channel. And the difference of those is that auxiliary is more like a sense effect and the FX channels are more like inserts effects. And in Pigments 5 you can also set the auxiliary channel to post FX. So far I haven't tried it myself, but you can leave a comment to let me know what it does. Let's stay focused on the normal stuff. You have three effect slots on every effect channel. And of course a nice collection of very good effects. And you can change the order of the effects simply by dragging and dropping. Also look at this feature here, Arturia not only made some effect presets for you, you can also save your own ones, which is pretty cool I think. Another cool thing in Pigments is the sequencer, which you can also turn into an arpeggiator. Don't forget to turn it on right here or with this little button here. And you can change all the parameters manually or by using the randomizer. And you can even adjust the impact of the randomizer for every parameter, like in real time. And shorten the sequence step by step simply by moving the right edge here. You will find the most important scales in this list. Classic scales as well as generative scales. And you also can create your own scales. And tweak these tiny sliders to change the probability of that node in the randomizer. Please also note the hints and tips that appear here in the bottom area every time you hover over a button, which is of course very helpful. I hope this video was helpful too, making your first steps in pigments like a walk on the highway. And if that's the case, be safe. Don't forget to leave a like before you go. Also check out thegroundnoise.com. My name is Markus and I hope to see you soon in the next one.